السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد <coughs> blessings of Allah سبحانه وتعالى who has given us the opportunity to start the last ten nights the last ten days of the month of Ramadan Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has reminded the ummah about the blessings of these nights. In the entire year, the blessed nights are the nights which are the last 10 nights of the month of Ramadan. And for a person to get this, these nights, he has to wait an entire year. So tonight is the 21st night of the month of Ramadan. If you want to catch another 21st night of the month of Ramadan, you'll have to wait for an entire year. And then the day after tomorrow will be the 23rd night of the month of Ramadan. So every single night as it passes, imagine for me to get this night again, I have to wait for one year. And not only waiting for one year, with the hope that I'm able to survive and live till that long to take the benefit. This is why, as Aisha radiallahu anha mentions in the riwayat of Sahih al-Bukhari, that when the last 10 days of the month of Ramadan will enter, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the first thing that he would determine for himself is ahya laylahu. He will spend the entire night in ibadah. The entire night dedicated to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then, وَأَيْقَضَ أَهْلَهُ Then he will try to encourage his family members to also stay awake at night and do ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَشَدَّ مِئْزَرَهُ And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would completely detach himself from desires that he might have and just give it the full time, give the full time towards this cause of worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now, alhamdulillah, you and I are in these blessed nights of the month of Ramadan which also happens to be probably, insha'Allah, one of the nights in which Laylatul Qadr will happen. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us Laylatul Qadr. We ask Allah to give us the experience of Laylatul Qadr. And we ask Allah to make us amongst those who are worshipping on the night of power, insha'Allah. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us fortunate ones, insha'Allah. So just a few reminders for all of us as we have our own nafs. Person has many thoughts, many things that he want to do, what he can do, what he should do. The first and foremost thing is a person needs to get himself ready that how I'm going to spend my night. If I have five, six hours of the night, how I'm going to, the night starts from Maghrib all the way till dawn. That's the night. Immediately after Maghrib Salah, that's where the night starts. And then it goes all the way till just when you stop eating for your fast. Now this entire night, what I'm going to achieve, what, what are the things that I want to get done in this blessed night that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given so the first thing is because Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he diversified his ibadah, his night prayers, his recitation of the Qur'an, supplication to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, looking and seeing what can, he, what can a person do to make his life better for the future. And these are the nights that where a person needs to make those decisions and make those commitments with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to control our interaction with individuals either physically or through social media. 
So this is the time that you close WhatsApp. This is the time that you don't go into that. A lot of time is spent people talking because the main thing that will save a person from the fire of hell is his word usage and how he communicates with people. As Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiyallahu an, that majority of the people who will go into the fire of hell will be those who have misused their tongue. A person needs to be mindful, watchful towards what he is saying or what he is writing. That's why the best way to save yourself, to save anyone, any individual who would like to save himself from the fire of hell, he needs to control his tongue. He needs to control his words. What is he talking about? Who is he talking to? What kind of conversation he is having? And a lot of times a person thinks that if a person is not able to see me, I can say whatever I want. MashaAllah, people are very good when you see them, when you meet them, when you see in front of them. But as soon as they sit behind a device to write something, then for some reason shaitan comes and hacks their device. Right? Shaitan comes and hacks the device. So behind the keyboard is not him. It's the beast inside. Right? And we want to close that beast. So the best way is to stay away from those things which will distract us from the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A person does a lot of ibadah, but he doesn't know how this ibadah is being wasted. Because we don't see a person's mashallah, you know, I recited X amount of juz, I made dua for this amount of time, I, I, I you know, made this many raka'ah of salah, so on and so forth. But then, on the other side, the actions that he is doing, he is taking all the reward away from him. And on the day of judgment, as the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam described, this person will be bankrupt. And he will say, "Oh, what happened to my nights of ibadah? What happens to all? What happened to all of these waking up at night and so on and so forth? It's gone. This is why a smart person he." controls he is able to safeguard his good deeds and he is able to take him take those good deeds with him so the first thing that we want to dedicate our time is supplication to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the supplication that has been given to us by the teachings of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam through the blessings of Aisha radiallahu anha when she asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that, Ya Rasulullah, if I was to find Laylatul Qadr, what dua shall I make? And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told her, recite, Allahumma innaka afuun tuhibbul afwa fa'afuan. So that is, the, you know, as much as person is able to recite throughout the night, because no matter how many times you recite, if, it, if it's one time that is accepted in the court of Allah, that is sufficient for our forgiveness. The second thing is ask Allah to save and protect us from the fire of hell. Allahumma a'tiq raqabati min al Oh Allah, save me from the fire of hell. And as I mentioned, to protect yourself from the fire of hell, you've got to control our words, our tongue. This is why social communication should be minimum. Even if we're coming to the masjid for qiyam, so on and so forth. Whatever we are doing, we should try to dedicate our time towards ibadah and don't make it work. Every minute counts. Just imagine to get that one minute that has passed from this night, from these blessed night, we'll have to wait for another year for those times to come, for that time to come back. So that's one. Number two is standing up in prayer in, in, in salah. As we, mashallah, you know, we have taraweeh prayer and then we have qiyam later on at night. Whatever we are able to do, to the best of our ability, if a person was praying eight rak'ah normally, let him increase some more rak'ah for taraweeh prayer. It's not going to hurt. If you're going to pray 12, 16, or 20, it's not as if you're going to commit a sin. No, it's going to give you more reward. So whatever we were doing throughout the month of Ramadan, from the Ramadan number one to Ramadan number 20, for the first 20 days, let us increase something 
in our last 10 days. If we were reciting half a juz of the Holy Quran, let's, let us recite one juz of the Holy Quran in the last 10 days. If we were doing dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for 20 minutes, let's make it to 40 minutes in the last 10 days. So whatever ibadah that we were doing regularly in our first 20 days of the month of Ramadan, make that double in the last 10 days. And that double is the, is the one that is going to bring the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's going to bring the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's going to give us deliverance from the fire of hell, inshallah. The third thing that I wanted to bring attention is we clean our hearts. That's very important. Our good action is not going to go above our head if we have something against anyone in our heart. This is the obstacle right there. Be polite, share love, become beloved in the sight of others, spread the word of love and peace amongst individuals, and give, keep muhabba, keep love in your heart. Because it is very difficult for a person to gain all of these good deeds, but very easy to lose it. And we don't want to be amongst those who are losing their ibadah before we depart inshallah we want to take our good deeds with us when we depart from this world we want to take the good deeds with us we don't want it to get it make them to go to waste before we depart so a few things inshallah if we can practice on this and then whatever type of salah whatever type of quran recitation you are able to do individually or collectively it is all good and accepted in the court of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then, when a person is also looking for the night of Qadr, the powerful night, the night where Allah Azza wa Jal just that one night, 83 years of ibadah. If a person is able to find that one night of ibadah, which is, happens to be late at Qadr, 83 years of ibadah has been dedicated to it. So inshallah, as the Maghrib Salah starts, after Maghrib we pray our Sunnah, our Awabin, Six raka'ah of awabin gives you the reward of 12 years of worship. The person who prays six raka'ah after the maghrib salah, and you can add the two with the sunnah, or exclude the sunnah and pray six extra, or pray four extra, including the sunnah, make it six. You get the reward of 12 years of ibadah. And those, not normal 12 years, 12 years of the month of Ramadan. Imagine how much Allah is there to give. And then from there onwards, Isha, and then after that, Taraweeh, after that, Qiyam, after our, our own personal ibadah. So make a schedule in such a way that every night brings blessings for us. We ask Allah to grant us the true understanding of, of this, and we ask Allah to make us amongst the successful ones in these blessed nights of the month of Ramadan. Ameen, Ya Rabbul Alameen. Jazakumullahu khairan.